The Anglosphere is inevitable. As you might have been able to tell from some of my more in-depth videos on the subject and some of the memes that have been going around, I'm very optimistic of Britain and the greater English-speaking world's future. Whether we're speaking of Kanzek, a closer Imperial Union-style state, or simply a tighter friendship between Britain, the Commonwealths, and the United States. And I've often heard hesitation to lump the US into this Anglosphere grouping, largely on account of its almost certain domineering role in said group. However, the US is undoubtedly an essential part of Britain and the Commonwealth's strategy for a long-term success and it would tremendously benefit them to keep the US as their foremost partner. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. We all know of the tremendous heights Britain once reached, the age of the globe-spanning empire. Today, Britain retains disunited fragments of that in the form of its settler colonies like Australia, Canada, and New Zealand, whose economies, populations, cultures, and standards of living are nearly identical, sharing a singular route, but now standing largely separated from one another across three continents. The separation of Britain from the European Union has opened the door and highlighted the need to forge closer and dependable partnerships with compatible states. Alone, Britain stands isolated on the continent and highly vulnerable if ever the continental Europeans were to become hostile either economically or militarily. In Oceania, Australia and New Zealand find themselves increasingly overshadowed by the economic and military giant of China, not to mention the rising Indonesia even closer by. Since the Cold War, the United States has taken up a valuable role as a defense and trade partner to this pair of Commonwealth nations. However, a desire to not become overly dependent upon the U.S., whose population, culture, and economy was both notably distinct and domineering, meant this alliance could only go so far. A similar case exists for Canada, though to a lesser degree. Its proximity to the United States has caused it to become overshadowed by its richer, stronger, and more densely populated southern neighbor. While American culture is certainly more compatible with Canadian culture than that of Australia, Canadian governing traditions, economics, and lifestyles are still far closer to those of Britain, Australia, and New Zealand than to the United States, where these matters alone can vary greatly from state to state. Clearly, the breakup of the Empire has left its surviving fragments as lesser pieces of a once greater whole, and even if only on a small scale, each country recognizes this and has attempted to recapture some of the old strengths they once held as a union, be it through the establishing of joint intelligence-sharing networks, collaborating on military matters, and pursuing closer trade relationships with one another. Since Britain left the EU, these efforts appear to have accelerated and may, within our lifetimes, produce something close to a revitalized British Empire or a new Anglo Union, of which Canada is almost certain to become the central hub for, as it alone can easily interact with Australia and New Zealand on one coast while interacting with Britain on the opposite coast. A united Anglosphere would stand as the largest country on the planet, one rich in resources, industry, and technology. Its economy would be the third or fourth largest in the world, behind the US, China, and the EU if you were to include them as a single economic unit. Its population would rank within the global top 10, and could be expected to rise significantly alongside its GDP. The United States has long been a part of the international collaborative efforts between the Anglosphere countries, and while it's unlikely to officially join such a union, there's no doubt a partnership will exist between the AS and US as a natural continuation of the long-held special relationship first established during the Great Wars. The US is clearly demonstrating exhaustion as the sole global superpower and evidently lacks confidence in China or Russia to fill that role, while the EU has thus far lacked tremendous interest in anything outside of regional politics. Thus, who better to alleviate that strain than the original global hegemon of Britain and its commonwealths? Even if the Anglosphere doesn't fully replace the United States as the sole global superpower, its multi-continental presence almost guarantees that it will play a major role in the global balance of power, and its tremendous wealth, population, size, and existing nuclear arsenal assure it the title of a superpower existing among others. The US of Z, thanks for watching. We've been trying some different videos these last few weeks, but rest assured that we'll be back to our usual alternate history content come October. Support your legion by liking the video, or join our ranks by subscribing for more. Mr. Z.